I see your screen. Yes, now you can see your slides. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, Please thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Please go ahead. Assalamu as alaikum again. And good afternoon to the dean, the chairman, and the director, and all the valuable speakers and attendees. Today we will be presenting with Mr. Murat together for approximately 40 minutes. My name is Farid Nonrat Mescigil. I am a hydraulics and water resource engineer and have 15 plus years of experience in water sector. I am working in Dosar Engineering as a senior design engineer and project coordinator for now. Assalamu alaikum, uh, dear Pakistani colleagues and the uh, respected uh, participants. Uh, my name is Murat Shine from Dosar Engineering Company. Uh, I am the, uh, working for Dosar as a project manager and the team leader of the uh, Kuram Tangi Integrated Water Resources Development Project in Pakistan. Okay, today, first of all, we would like to express our sincere gratitude and regards to UET Lahore for having us here and giving us the chance to express and share the knowledge with our future colleagues and colleagues. We are well aware of that for hydraulic design, there are many topics that can be discussed. But for today, we prepared a presentation that highlights some spotlight issues in hydraulic design computations and our suggestions based on the challenges we face during the design stage. In today's presentation, first I would like to give a brief information about our company, Dolser Engineering, and then we will present hydrological impacts of climate change, hydraulic design challenges, and some FAQs respectively. Dolser Engineering was established in 1971 and is the leading engineering and consultancy company of Tur Turkey. Dolser has provided engineering services for dams up to 272 meters of height, and the cumulative installed capacity of 35,000 megawatts. Dolsar is an ENR top 225 listed engineering firm. Dolsar has been working in Pakistan since 2011 for clients such as WAPTA, NHA and Kipeki Pido. Most notable projects of Dolsar in Pakistan include Bashadam, Dasudam, Mohmantam, Kuram Tangi Integrated Water Resources Project and Havali and Takot Expressway. As we already know, the most important environmental crisis today is climate change. In general, when climate change is mentioned, it is mentioned as an event that will happen in the future. However, since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, that is almost 200 years, the impacts of climate change have be become palpable today as a result of factors such as the ongoing developments and the damage to natural resources by ourselves. These impacts are sudden floods, Increase in duration and frequency of droughts, widening of the temperature difference throughout the year, shifting in rainy seasons, increase in hail precipitation. In the future, the impacts of climate change may become even more serious. As can be seen in this slide, even if the global temperature increase is kept at 2, two degrees Celsius, it has become inevitable that we will encounter very serious climate change impacts. For as an example, in case, of an, in, in case of an increase of 2 degrees Celsius across the world, it is predicted that about 400 million people will be affected by droughts in, two, in, in 2,100 years. And there will be 170% increase in flood events. The next few slides will give us more detailed information about the inform, in, importance of this subject. As can be seen in this infographic by IPCC summary for policymakers report, observed change in hot extremes since 1950 is increased in almost all regions of the world. If we focus on the Southern Asia region, we can see that the human contribution to the observed change is high. When we check the extreme temperature event that occurred once in 10 years on average in a climate change without human influence, Say the temperature rises 2 degrees Celsius again, hot extremes will occur almost six times in 10 years. Also, it can be seen in this infographic that observed change in extreme precipitation since 1950 is increased in Southern, Southern Asia region. Uh, Southern Asia region and the human contribution to the observed change 
is low due to limited agreement. However, when we check the heavy one day precipitation event that occurred once in 10 years on average in a climate change without human influence, say the temperature rises again two degrees Celsius, it will occur 1.7 times more in 10 years. In the light of the above information, it is clear that the impacts of climate change, which are still felt today, will increase in severity in the future, and that extreme weather events such as droughts and floods will be experienced more frequently and severely. Recent major floods experienced worldwide are an indication for this. For Pakistan, the causes of the floods were heavier than usual monsoon rains and melting glaciers that followed a severe heat wave. These are both linked to climate change. Considering the imp these impacts in designs as engineers today has become a must rather than a necessity. The impacts of climate change will sure affect hydrology studies, which sets the basis of a water structure design. When it comes to the field of hydraulic design, the impacts of climate change on water availability, floods and sedimentation are crucial. For the selection of design floods, there are lots of guidelines published by ICOLD, US Cold, and United States Army Corps of Engineers and by the local institutions of different countries. In this slide, the guideline of Army Corps of Engineers is shown as an example. The challenge here is there is no guideline for weir type of structures. So for weirs, it is advisable to design for at least the 1% annual flood, that means in a a hundred year return period, and it would be wise to check performance for more extreme floods up to, say, the uh, thousand year flood for a major wave. Yeah, actually, uh, this is a British suggestion uh, recommended by the engineers and lecturers of the uh, University of uh, Hertfordshire. Uh, we also uh, follow this uh, suggestion in Turkey. Uh, and check the safety uh, of our wave structures, I mean the headworks structures, uh, generally against 500 years return period uh, flood discharge. Uh, of course, this, uh, this, this uh, selection changes from place to place uh, in Turkey because, you know, uh, the climate the different climates are observed in different parts of Turkey, but in general, uh, designing your headwork structure against, uh, or uh, I mean, considering at least a 100 year return period float, but check your uh, structure, especially the heights of the uh, upstream walls, the, the crest levels of the uh, upstream side walls, uh, according to the uh, 500 years return period float discharge. Uh, this is this is a, a challenge uh, for hydraulic engineers, uh, as you know, to which specific float discharge uh, shall we, you know, design our uh, hydraulic structures under the threat of the climate, uh, as my colleague highlighted, the impact adverse impacts of the climate change issue. So, uh, for Pakistan. Uh, actually, we are working also in Pakistan uh, after uh, thinking about the unfortunate 2010 and 2022 uh, floods, unfortunate floods. Maybe uh, the Pakistani authorities um, may focus on uh, for wave type structures. Uh, the selection of the design float can be increased to uh, 1,000 uh, 1,000 years uh, return period float can be, uh, uh, you know, uh, advised to the uh, Pakistani colleagues. Uh, actually, we completed uh, four uh, hydropower projects, the detailed feasibility studies of uh, these projects so far, and we preferred uh, checking the safety of our structures uh, at the feasibility level design stage uh, according to the 1000 year return period float uh, in our design.
Since the sedimentation is a serious problem in Pakistan, the selection of dead storage volume in dam projects is a major challenge. We suggest the following methodology to overcome this challenge. Conduct regional analysis by collecting data from the contiguous river basins and previous existing dam projects. Review the regional sediment data from the contiguous gauging stations. Carry out sediment yield analysis with Russell method, revised universal soil loss equation method. Compare the outcomes and select the higher sediment yield to be resilient against climate change impacts. Develop a reservoir sedimentation model, simulation in HECRAS or similar software to check the outcomes of the above methods and whether a delta formation is encountered or not. Study several options with different flushing discharges and flushing durations to decide the amount of accumulated sediment which could be removed from the reservoir. Investigate which flushing option increases the service life of the dead storage to 50 years of economic life. Propose multi-level intakes to increase the service life of the dam further. And in addition, a comprehensive watershed management plan, in other words, increasing vegetation, building check dams, can be proposed to reduce the sediment yields. Uh, yeah, here. Uh... Yeah, actually, uh, we uh, suggest the Russell method uh, for the computation of the sediment yield of a river basin where sediment data records are not available or, or insufficient or unreliable. Uh, this is uh, this method uh, allows us, uh, you know, to check the uh, data available with us and uh, checking in hydraulic engineering problems uh, with some other empirical methods or the past experiences always advisable. Uh, you know, this, this method uh, requires a specially distributed land cover map uh, like this one. As shown on the left side here and the green, the green areas, for example, here uh, indicate the forest areas. The pink areas show the riverbeds here, as you see, the riverbeds and the actual uh, float plains and the yellow zones uh, stand for the barren lands. The, this map is downloaded uh, from the free source data of Copernicus to determine the cover management factor. Actually, we are proposing Russell method, but it is an empirical method. Uh, but uh, it is not very easy because uh, you have to determine uh, uh, lots of uh, factors, lots of coefficients uh, like key factor, C factor, S factor, L factor, lots of factors are uh, required in the computation and these factors are computed by several empirical equations. Uh, but we still suggest uh, some, you know, uh, similar approaches like this uh, because you may you may not have some reliable data or insufficient data sediment. I'm talking about the sediment uh, records of the rivers. Uh, so this may help you in the at least checking your uh, envisage in the uh, during the feasibility level studies. So you can see uh, in the right side here in the right side, uh, an output of a reservoir sedimentation model. Can I see here also? Can I show it here? Yeah. Uh, we developed this model in HECRAS, and this model shows uh, two delta formations, as you see. If you don't uh, take any precaution against reservoir sedimentation, uh, especially without flushing, as you see, in one year, the accumulation starts like this, in 10 year, 20 year, 30 year, the two delta formation uh, comes into the picture. So you lose your active storage and the purpose of the dam uh, may, may be uh, adversely impact, uh, affected. A precaution uh, may be 
uh, converting the divergent tunnels uh, to uh, to 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 sediment flushing tunnels in order to you know wash out these uh, delta formations and sediment accumulation. Here, uh, another another remedy that we can suggest uh, for the uh, hydraulic engineers uh, is designing a vertical and symmetrical approach intake, which results in a shallow vortex step, and it allows us. Uh, to have a greater active volume in the reservoir. As, as you know, as evident in the Gordon's uh, equation, which is a very famous equation, uh, the C factor, which is an empirical coefficient, is less for symmetrical approach in days. If you design a symmetrical approach, like an elliptical bell mouth uh, or circular bell mouth, like here, uh, you can you can uh, end up with a smaller or shallower uh, submergent step, and it allows you a huge. Uh, you see here active volume. In in this design, uh, if you maybe you can see here the dead storage level and the minimum water level. So uh, by applying a uh, symmetrical approach, you can have a limited, I mean, a shallow vortex step. And uh, what if after, after, I mean, for example, 50 years or 30 years, what if uh, the that the accumulation, I mean, the deposition of the deposition of the sediments rise to this level? Then, uh, if you provide such an uh, intake structure, multi-level intake structure controlled by four or uh, in this example it is four gates you see here there are four service gates and the controlling cranes are here so uh, you can close the button the most button uh, gate the opening with, 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 with this gate and it allows you to continue taking uh, water, withdrawing water from the reservoir in, in the upper upper gate. So uh, this is a this is this is a remedy. This is a, a design precaution to extend the service life uh, of the of the reservoir. Uh, as you know, there are some uh, other uh, suggestions in the literature. For example, the submergence. Uh, that should be uh, at least 0.7 times the diameter of the conduit. And it is preferable to design the conduit size with a fruit number less than 0.5. Here, another, another challenge uh, we can discuss with you. Uh, if you don't... Uh, if you are in a hurry and if you don't have uh, time to uh, build the detailed HECRAS model, uh, then well, what can we do as, as hydraulic engineers? As you know, at the left, at the left side, uh, there is an empirical equation uh, uh, suggested by the Sorry. International Research and Training Center on Erosion and Sediment in 1995. This is a simple empirical equation. The parameters are written here, as you see. The, the purpose is uh, determine this uh, sediment transport capacity of your flushing tunnel, for example, uh, with, with, with uh, a constant flushing discharge like this. Like this. How, how much how, amount? How much amount sediment how, can I evacuate from from my low level outlay? Uh, so you can use this uh, empirical formula to check your uh, for, for the uh, preliminary uh, studies, design studies, initial design studies, and uh, for the uh, controlling. I mean, che checking your uh, uh, detailed hydraulic model uh, with the softwares. <clears throat> I would like to share also a simple table, as my colleague highlighted. Uh, we we uh, have to follow some methodology. Uh, 
for for designing out the uh, dead storage loss. This table shows the uh, the dead storage loss in cubic meters per sec uh, cubic meters at various flushing durations with a constant uh, flushing discharge. Suppose that uh, you are uh, flushing the sediments with a constant 50 uh, cubic meters per second discharge. In this case, uh, as evident from the table, uh, without flushing, without flushing, you may lose the dead storage level in approximately 39 years, within 39 years, which is not, you know, uh, acceptable uh, design for, for a dam type structure. Uh, suppose that the dead storage volume you provided in the dam is a, approximately 400 uh, mi million, mi uh, 404 uh, million cubic meters. So you will, if you don't make any flushing, you will lose the dead storage in 39 years with, with this. But if you uh, perform 10 days flushing per annum, I mean yearly, then you can extend this table show after HECRAS analysis shows that you can increase the life of the dead storage approx to approximately 44 years with, with suppose with, with 50, 50 cubic uh, uh, flushing discharge. If you increase the uh, duration of the flushing yearly, if you increase it to 20 days, then you can see that uh, the dead storage will be lost uh, after 50 years period. If you further increase it to 30 days, uh, I, I, I'm talking about the yearly flushing duration. If you increase it 30 days, then you can see that uh, you can increase the service life of the dead storage uh, to approximately 60 years. So this is an option analysis. Uh, you can make such a study after building a, a hydraulic model in HECRAS. You can run the software with different durations, and then you can present uh, this table to, to the uh, clients or the, to the local institutions. Uh, and to the authorities uh, you are meeting with. So another uh, optional of this analysis, we can suggest the dead storage loss at various flashing discharges. The previous table was uh, presenting only a constant discharge, but here you can also make some uh, trials with the software. For example, if you don't uh, have any flashing, uh, the dead storage will be lost in 39 years. Uh, but with 30 cubic meters per second flushing discharge, you see it is slightly increased. And increasing the duration and increasing the discharge increases the service life of the dead storage, as uh, evident in this table. So if you apply, for example, 100 cubic flushing discharge for 30 days uh, of uh, 30 days to rush, 30 days duration uh, in a year, you can extend the life of the dead storage more than 400 years. So these are the alternatives. These can be presented to the clients and the institutions, and the best alternative can be selected uh, jointly. Yes. Okay, friction loss along the OG profile is generally ignored or calculated simply by this formula. <clears throat> but there is an inevitable friction loss here, and it shouldn't be ignored. So when we when we talk about the OG profile, it is it starts from this apex point of the spillway, and it and it continues along this uh, this profile OG shaped profile. This is the uh, circular circular. circular transition and then it it ends here at the beginning of the shoot canal so uh, we suggest that it can be computed precisely by applying the standard step method described detailly in the in the design of small dams by usbr yeah here uh, my colleague wants to say that you know 
Uh, it is very simple. The standard step method is uh, widely used by uh, hydraulic engineers and uh, the methodology is described very well in uh, lots of international uh, hydraulic textbooks. So uh, you can prepare such a simple calculation sheet. Uh, th th this is the breed, I mean the width of the uh, spillway section. This is the normal water depth starting from the apex point and uh, ending and, at the uh, and shoot canal. Canal. Uh, at the beginning of the shoot canal. Uh, you can calculate the uh, area of the flow, velocity of the flow, the velocity head, the parameter of the free flow, the hydraulic radius, and the uh, low uh, slope, uh, I mean the uh, mining friction slope, and taking the average. So the, the delta L, shows the uh, distance between the uh, incremental distance between the sections uh, all along the OG profile. So calculation of the friction loss and then uh, you can calculate the water level and energy grade line. Also the uh, fruit number along the shoot. So uh, as you see uh, at the apex point, the velocity is approximately, in this example, 10 meters per second. The depth of water is around 10 meters, but it decreases to uh, 5.65 meters, the depth of flow, and velocity increases approximately to 18 meters per second. So uh, in order to start uh, the shoot design, uh, we just simply suggest uh, instead of ignoring the uh, friction losses along the nut uh, or calculating the uh, friction losses or the velocities uh, at the beginning of the shoot, uh, only depending on a very simple empirical formulas, uh, you can use uh, this method uh, to be more precise. Yeah, let's continue with this. Okay. okay. Obtain, 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 obtaining a similar pointing depth in spillway and sluiceway energy dissipating basins is a common challenge in the hydraulic design of runoff river type projects. Uh, to overcome this challenge, uh, we suggest to provide a divider wall between the spillway and sluiceway basins and design the spillway according to the design flood discharge and keep the evacuation capacity of the sluiceway as a cushion for the safety check flood discharge. By doing these suggestions, there would be no need to design a deep sluiceway basin to satisfy the Bernoulli equation between the water level after the hydraulic jump and the tailwater level. As you can see here in the picture, uh, you, don't, you don't need to embed the uh, base elevation for the sluiceway uh, to, uh, to the base elevation of the energy dissipating basin of the weir, weir structure. And here is a plan of a simple wear structure. Here is the sluice way. Here is the wear, and here you can see the divider wall. Uh, divider wall, and these are two separate structures. So these uh, these structures will operate separately. Maybe here I can uh, add. Uh, can you please come back? Oh, I can add a uh, simple explanation. Uh, as you know, uh, in order to economize our uh, projects, sometimes uh, we want uh, some hydraulic engineers actually want to uh, combine the energy dissipating basin of the sluiceway and of, uh, the and the spillway sections of the headworks, and uh, they want to de design the uh, float, the design the structure, the total structure uh, against. The float design, the, the design discharge of the uh, float, but you know the, the discharge capacity. They simply add the solution discharge capacity of the solution way uh, and the discharge capacity of the spillway. Sim simply add these two capacities, and it they equal it uh, to the design discharge. This is an approach, uh, no problem. But in in uh, in some small projects, this idea works well, but in some big projects, uh, what I mean, uh, 
by saying that big, the, if the float, uh, design float discharge is very high, then uh, this approach may not be, uh, may not be, you know, meaningful. So separating the structures uh, is advisable. Uh, otherwise, uh, as hydraulic engineers, uh, we can have a very difficult uh, situation. I mean, uh, we, we can uh, lose lots of time uh, just to uh, may I show it? Just to you know, the uh, equalize the conjugate uh, depths of the uh, hydraulic jam of the spillway and sluiceway sections. Actually, there is no need for such a design. The purpose of the sluiceway is, uh, especially in very high sediment yield rivers, is just to uh, sluice or just to wash out the uh, accumulated sediment in the small reservoir of the uh, headwork. So uh, the purpose is different. Uh, you can, of course, uh, take the advantage of the capacity of the sluiceway, but uh, you know there is no need to equalize the conjugate depths uh, of the uh, sluiceway and the uh, spillway sections. Uh, just make a very, very, you know, simple design uh, to ease the washing out of the uh, sediments or the accumulated, you know, the river wet material uh, to wash out it uh, to the downstream section. Okay, there's a frequent confusion about the equation used to compute the discharge capacity of a sluiceway. Actually, our suggestion is to use the submerged orifice tube flow equation shown here uh, during the flood, flood when the tailwater level is high. And use the sluice flow equation used uh, here on the right side, uh, shown here in the, on the right side, during the normal operation uh, when the tailwater level is low. In addition, if flood discharges and bed material yields are substantially high, as in Pakistan, uh, it is suggested to design navigation type weirs. Here is the here is the um, here is an example that references the in a, a, again the Army Corps of Engineers. This is a navigation type weir, and we also uh, applied this type of weir in one of our projects in Pakistan, one of our hydropower projects in Pakistan. The broad crested weir shown here uh, is generally not so high, so accumulated sediment can be washed out by opening the gates during high flood seasons. That uh, that type of weir, navigation type of weir, also helps that. The seepage analysis also is a must in weir design since it impacts the type of the energy stealing basin. Uh, yeah, generally, you know, the, as hydraulic engineers, we sometimes may forget to take into account the piping phenomena and uh, calculate the uplift forces when selecting the type of the energy dissipating basin. Uh, short basins may be may not be adequate against adverse impact of the seepage. Uh, uh, what I want to mention in this, uh, you know, slide. Uh, we are facing during our professional life, especially uh, some uh, presentation with in five minutes because we are uh, short a short of time. Okay. okay, okay, we will we will finish in uh, I think like in five minutes or in, something in like five that. Minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, in in professional life, especially some young engineers, uh, just review the. Uh, the, the design, uh, you know, guidelines, uh, and think only the hydraulic aspect of the design. So, uh, by the float discharges, he makes his design and uh, select the uh, after calculation of the fluid number and the velocity at the beginning of the energy dissipating basin. He goes uh, or refers to the charts and says that all oh, my energy dissipating basin is type two or type three according to USPR, you know, practice. But uh, it, in some uh, in some projects, especially if the uh, float discharges are high, uh, you you may not, you know, the, 
from hydraulic point of view, uh, your uh, uh, energy dissipating basin may be uh, uh, adequate, of uh, no problem. But uh, if you check the seepage beneath the structure, uh, then it, it, you may be uh, in a position to extend the length of the uh, energy dissipating basin, or uh, you you should take some other precautions uh, like uh, constructing uh, some cutoff walls in the upstream part of your structure to preclude the adverse impacts of the uh, seepage uh, forces and update forces. The, these, these figures shows, although it is a very, uh, you know, old suggestion, uh, old methodology uh, proposed by Mr. Lay in 13, uh, 1935, this is a very simple method in headworks and wave design. Uh, so uh, you can check the adequate of or the sufficiency of your uh, structure, especially the, the base of the energy dissipating basin, whether it is sufficient or not uh, for, from this figure, for, from by following the lane method. As you know, although there are lots of so commercial softwares to uh, perform the seepage analysis uh, in the literature. Uh, these are some basic approaches uh, if you don't have uh, such softwares or if you don't have some type. Uh, another uh, Army Corps of Engineers suggestion, you can calculate very simply the uplift forces here. Uh, the way you can calculate the structure of the way, uh, structure of the uh, base. Uh, the energy dissipating basin, the weight of the contained water, and the weight of the uh, float discharges. Uh, we also know that the agriculture sector has a vast importance in Pakistan, and there are several irrigation projects in operation, and uh, many of them are under design and construction stage. So uh, hydraulic engineers may face some challenges during irrigation canal design studies. Therefore, we would like to share some basic guidelines with you. Uh, the flow regime uh, in the canal should be critical, it should be subcritical in the channel. Fruit number should be less than 0.8 to prevent some hydraulic jumps. The velocity in the channel should be greater than 0.7 meters per second to prevent the settling of suspended sediments, and the maximum velocity in the channel should be less than the 90% of the critical velocity. Uh, also, the minimum radius for the curvatures throughout the channel alignment to make the bent losses ignorable. Uh, you can follow these simple criteria, but uh, don't, 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 uh, don't provide, uh, provide uh, radius uh, curvatures uh, which have the radius uh, less than 25 meters. Also, uh, in calculation of the fruit numbers in trapezoidal channels, you know, in fruit, uh, in this equation, the D stands for the hydraulic depth. In uh, rectangular channels, uh, it is very simple. It is just the depth of the water. It is just uh, H, but in trapezoidal channels, uh, D is, uh, I mean, the hydraulic diameter of the flow is equal to the wet area divided by the uh, top width of the flow. This is generally mixed by the young engineers. So we wanted to share some uh, simple uh, <laughs> experience with you. Also, in alignment design of the tra trapezoidal canals, uh, we can provide at least a 40 meter long linear route as indicated here, uh, between successive reserve, uh, reverse curves uh, to allow the flow uh, to uh, a, a more comprehensive, I mean, a more uh, a safe uh, flow in the channel. OK, then there are some frequent asked questions and our suggestions about them. Uh, the first one is which cross section is the best for hydraulic tunnels? 
As intimated, as intimated in design of small dams of USPR, the circular cross section is the best for tunnel lining in terms of both hydraulic and structural aspects. The modified horseshoe cross section is suggested for the tunnel excavation due to its lower cost and easy transportation during the construction. Here you can you can save to you can save some from not ex excavating this yeah. these areas here. So you can so save it. In, in, instead of designing a V-shaped uh, cross section for the for the excavation, uh, we, you can design a modified horseshoe uh, cross section for the uh, excavation uh, excavation area, and you can save this triangular amount of concrete in your design. Next, please. Yes, which equation shall we use to calculate friction loss in hydraulic systems? So that uh, we suggest to use mining equation in open channel flow systems and to use a darcy weisbach equation uh, in the pressure systems. Uh, here we can say that, you know, in uh, 70s, 80s or 90s, maybe uh, in the old times, uh, as you know, the hydraulic engineers uh, were pre preferring to use Mellon's equation uh, also to compute the pressure flows in, in, in uh, power tunnel systems, so, I mean in pressurized systems. But as you know, nowadays we have powerful softwares and uh, we have uh, abilities. So uh, although it is a bit difficult to make calculations with the darcy by equation, uh, we suggest uh, to use this equation in especially in the friction loss uh, computations in the pressurized systems. Uh, we can calculate the Reynolds number first, and then we, we can use the colbert white equation uh, to compute the uh, friction, the coefficient of friction in the darcy by equation, this F. Uh, this is a closed form equation, and it is difficult to calculate by hand calculations, but as I mentioned, uh, in in Excel or in other softwares, you know, it is very simple to make a uh, uh, to make a Goldseek analysis, and then you can calculate easily the friction loss. So uh, it is it is our experience using uh, darcy weisbach equation, especially in power tunnel systems or in uh, flows in penstock, the pressurized flow. It yields more accurate. Uh, and more precise results than the Manning equation. So another question is, which method is advisable in the hydraulic design of a surge shaft? As you know, there are lots of lots of methods like Jager method, Mises method, Scottish method, Forsheimer method, Parmakian method, or and Pressel method. But we uh, we suggest to use Pressel method in uh, in the hydraulic design of a surge shaft. Yeah, actually, these are other methods. Some of the other methods are uh, graphical methods and old methods. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, nowadays we have powerful uh, computing systems, so uh, there is no need to, uh, you know, go into the graphical chart methods. So the, we can prefer analytical methods. Uh, also, th th there are lots of actually nowadays in uh, specific purpose uh, uh, softwares available uh, in the professional life. We use it, but uh, to check your design or to make some simple calculations, especially for initial design studies or preliminary uh, feasibility level sta stages, uh, the present method is an analytical method. Uh, you can uh, define or enter or uh, the formula, the equations in a simple, you can prepare a simple Excel sheet and use it uh, confidently. Also, it is suggested to provide a throttle in the source shafts to increase the efficiency of the source shaft. Uh, this, this is a slightly important issue. Uh, when you're doing the hydraulic computations for source shaft, use maximum water level and minimum roughness coefficients in hydraulic computations for the upsurge case and use minimum water level and maximum roughness coefficient for the down surge case. Uh, these are these are our slides, but 
as a maybe as a last word, uh, it is pertinent to mention that the uh, planning stage of the hydraulic design is crucial. If the project is not planned as precise as it could be in the initial stages, then uh, it will be more. It will be very difficult to change in the further stages. This also leads to additional costs for additional surveys and investigation. But maybe the most important of these are time. Um, thank you very much for listening. This is our presentation. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much. So if you guys have any question, you are welcome to ask. In-person participants as well as our online participants. I need to have uh, need to ask one question. I am geotechnical engineering. Most of the time, I have the issue to uh, calculate the scouring depth in water channels. So, can you please guide me which equation is better or good in calculating the scouring de depth in water channels? <laughs> Can you can you please repeat the question? Actually, the question is uh, which equation you recommend to compute the scour depth, you know, for uh, particularly for uh, piles design or bridge design like that. For for the yes, design so of bridge piers, so, so, so we need depth, to compute the scour depth. depth. And there are certain equations like Lacey equation or so many other equations. So which equation do you recommend? Yeah, very nice question. Actually, uh, we are generally uh, referring to uh, Lean State uh, in our uh, you know, hydraulic design, especially for bridges. Uh, actually, you know, uh, for th this is an important, you know, uh, scoring issue is a very important uh, problem in hydraulic field. So uh, our approach actually, uh, like we do in soil mechanics and foundation engineering, uh, there are lots of empirical equations available uh, in the literature. Uh, my approach, my personal approach, I'm trying to calculate, uh, you know, with the with the all available uh, formula and uh, practice uh, recommended in the uh, hydraulic books, and then uh, try to you know, uh, and then try to select uh, making it like it uh, making an option analysis. So it is it is better instead of you know uh, focusing on a specific equation. Uh, saying that this equation is uh, the best uh, for scoring is, is a bit difficult. So uh, personally, I advise to, you know, carry out your calculations with the uh, equations, with different equations, uh, and then compare them and maybe uh, the average of these uh, outcomes can be uh, preferred. Okay, thank you. Is there any other question? Any question from online participants? If you have any question, you can raise your hand. No questions? Uh, okay, so if you do not have any further questions. Okay, one question. All right. Let me give you the mic. Turn it on, please. Yeah. I just want to ask a question regarding this uh, formula that you are uh, mentioning. You have mentioned two formulas, Darcy Weiss back and Manning formulas. That is good for open canal and uh, this. Uh, a concrete. Now, what if if uh, our uh, our pipes is uh, like, for example, steel? What type of formula you need to use? Okay. 
Do I need to repeat the question? In your can you hear me? Okay, okay, yes. Thank you, thank you for your question. Uh, let me repeat the question if if we understand it right. Uh, we mentioned the two formulas, uh, Manning and Darcy Weisbach, right? And you are asking if yeah. our system is uh, composed of steel, which equation is preferred or suggested by us? Is it is it yes. the right question? Yes. Okay. Okay. For steel, for steel, it's we suggest Darcy Weisbach formula. Yeah. It is more. It, it, it's it's much much more accurate in in steel systems, in pressurized steel uh, systems. Working uh, in irrigation for uh, more than thirty six years, and uh, when it comes to uh, like pipes, I'm using Hazen Williams. Hmm. Uh, regarding this, uh, regarding this uh, roughness coefficient that you are using, no, what? Yeah. What type of coefficient we need to use when it is earth canal? Yeah, yeah. Roughness right. coefficient. Actually, the, actually, there are other equations. For example, Chase equation. You are right. Hazen Williams is another. Uh, yeah. Only we, we don't have only the Manning and the uh, you know Darcy Weisbach equation. Uh, the you know the difficulty here, uh, the challenge here is selection of the roughness coefficient actually. Which one is more accurate, or which one, for example, the uh, roughness, the the epsilon, uh, you will select to put in the Darcy Weisbach equation, and uh, we are, you know, uh, generally referring to uh, starting from Vantage There are and the, 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 the there are lots of hydraulic books, hydraulic uh, uh, articles are available suggesting. Uh, some more precise uh, 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 epsilon uh, numbers, I mean the roughness coefficients. So the main challenge is here is uh, selecting the coefficient, the right coefficient for the right case. Or uh, as, as for example, my uh, colleague highlighted that in search shaft design, uh, if you are designing for the down search, you have to use the uh, uh, maximum maximum uh, roughness, but if you are uh, using the other one, the upsurge, uh, then you use the uh, minimum one. So, uh, as hydraulic engineers, we have to be aware of uh, which case we are studying and which is, which formula, which equation is the best for our case, and you know, uh, in the in the within the formula, which uh, parameter can be selected uh, more precisely from the literature. So uh, we are not against uh, Hazen Williams also. We only want to highlight that if if uh, there is a possibility to. What questions I need to ask? Thank you. Sir, so you can come here. Uh, I must. I need uh, one questions. Uh, one, uh, that the questions that I need to ask uh, for uh, those hydraulics uh, practitioners. Now, when you are working with Manning's formula, uh, uh, it is uh, there is also one consultant to uh, uh, who is uh, uh, with the consultant. Ask me about this roughness coefficient that we need to adapt when you are working in river. And when you are working with this earth, earth canal, and when you are working with concrete, uh, what type of coefficient, uh, what uh, what uh, parameters you are using now in uh, using as a roughness coefficient for all of those uh, materials we have? Yeah, Your suggestion. Yeah, the, you know there are lots of literature available. Uh, I I personally. Uh, I uh, suggest you, uh, advise you to follow uh, Vantage of book. The suggestions, especially for uh, river flows, the money roughness coefficients suggested in Vantage of book uh, is, is uh, really uh, appreciable. And when we make some comparisons in our uh, projects in Turkey, uh, we, we realize that the 
suggestions of uh, money roughness coefficients in vantage of who uh, is generally uh, fitting, uh, you know, uh, giving good results uh, in our projects. And also, I would like to add one more thing about this roughness coefficient issue. Uh, when you're choosing a roughness coefficient, uh, especially in the money formula, uh, there will, in Vantage Shows book, for example, there is a range. Uh, you have to uh, you have to keep in mind, and you have to take into account that the uh, quality of the contractors or quality of the concrete, the quality of the craftsman craftsmanship in general. Uh, when you're when you're choosing this roughness coefficient in your region or in your country that I have to mention. Yeah, mi minimum, maximum and average coefficients yeah. are uh, given. So uh, we have to be careful as hydraulic engineers, you know, uh, which case are we, you know, designing for? And uh, as my colleague highlighted, uh, at what part of your uh, our country we are working? What is the capability of the workmanship, the capability of the, uh, you know, the the local contractors, lots of other social issues are uh, coming into picture in, in such cases. So uh, uh, we have to be careful uh, in uh, making uh, such selections in our design companies. Okay, thank you. In irrigation. You can come to the podium. You come in. Please. Uh, my name is Roland Tagufa. I've been here in Pakistan for 16 years. I've worked in irrigations for 20 years in uh, the Philippines. I'm a Filipino. Uh, actually, uh, when it comes to roughness coefficient we are adapting there in the Philippines, I just a sort of information only. Uh, when we are working with concretes, now we are adapting 0 0.013 to 0 0.015 coefficient. No? And then when it comes to earth fill canal, we are adapting 0 0.025 for earth canal. And uh, when it is a river, it's, it's depend upon uh the 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 type of uh, uh terrain you have if there are some uh, trees plantations now nah, and on the bed we are using 0 0.025 but when it comes to side slope sometimes we use 0 0.04 to point uh, uh we, we are we are conducting some studies for that uh that is just a sort of info information when you are doing some uh, calculations for Manning's formula. Uh, Thanks. Thank you very Thank much. You. That's a, that's that's a very very good that's a very good and uh, uh, important information. Thank you very much. Also, Thank you. For example, if you Is have, there any uh, questions? Uh, okay, we have a question at the back. For, for example, you can uh, you can select uh, Manning for 0.04 uh, uh, for very wild rivers, very steep slope and rocky terrain. And, and uh, for uh, for example, 0 0.03 uh, for the riprap section of the uh, head roads. Engineer we have to take areas. the next question. I'm sorry to interrupt, but let me take the next question, please. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Kamran Ahmed. Come to the podium, please. Salam Ghari. Azaz, this is a battery. My dear, okay. So please introduce yourself and then ask your question. My name is Kamran Ahmed. I am from NESPAC. And I have uh, my service age of about 30 years. Uh, my question is uh, that uh, usually we uh, prefer to, uh, uh, to use uh, Lacey's formula 
for calculating the scour depth to estimate it. And then we multiply by some factors uh, to come up with, uh, uh, I mean, digestible uh, value. Uh, well, uh, we for 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 this uh, uh, formula, we use the D fifty. Uh, my question is, what uh, value of D fifty we should use? Uh, when the material is not granular, it is a clay material. This is my question. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, Engineer Murad, did you get the question? Okay. <laughs> Okay, th th this is this is yeah a, a bit a uh, good question, but uh, I have to defer <laughs> to my uh, engineering box. Uh, now I don't remember to uh, please forgive me about. Uh, I I cannot answer uh, now. I have to refer uh, to the engineering design box before replying it. All right, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so with this, I think we can uh, move towards the next next thing. Uh, next, I would request Professor Dr. Noor Muhammad Khan to please come to the podium and give some concluding remarks. Mr. Mazhar, you have a question. I think you have raised your hand. speaker. तो ये तो इन्होंने वैसे इसे 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 डाउन कर दो अगर वो स्पीकर ही है तो ओके ये स्पीकर ही है फिनिश ना ओके मिस्टर मिस्टर फजील नवाज यू कैन अनम्यूट योर माइक एंड रेज योर क्वेश्चन बट इट शुड बी क्विक क्वेश्चन शॉर्ट क्विक क्वेश्चन मिस्टर फजील Okay, you can send uh, the online participants can send their questions in the chat box and we can uh, forward it to the relevant speaker and we can uh, reply to those questions. So at the end, we uh, because we are uh, uh, overrunning, overrunning the time by 30 minutes, so I will try to be brief. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all the participants which are physically present over here and I, I am happy to inform that uh, more than 80 uh, participants were physically over here. And out of the 400 registered participants online, I think we had uh, more than 70 participants which remained with us over here. So that shows the interest of the people uh, in this uh, important subject. And I am also happy that uh, uh, listening to too much to hydrology and climate change, we have gone towards some something basics of civil engineers that hydraulics and the challenges uh, which we are facing in hydraulics engineering. Uh, I am also happy to inform that uh, countries uh, like Turkey, Nepal, Australia, Iran, Philippines uh, have been participating uh, in this seminar. So that make this seminar truly an uh, international seminar. Uh, organizations like NESPAC, DESCON, ACE, ICS, ILF Pakistan, and uh, uh, national organizations like WAPDA, Irrigation, uh, and the universities like FAST, uh, UCP, University of Chenab, UET Texla. So they have participated in this seminar. And uh, that was one of our purpose that we wanted to bring our students, our uh, researchers and academicians together with the practitioners from Pakistan and uh, abroad uh, at one forum so that we can build uh, on synergy and we can build our knowledge for mutual benefit. I, I hope we are successful in that. Uh, I am thankful to uh, all the resource person, uh, namely uh, Mr. Eric Lesleiter, Dr. Ajay Kar uh, Karkai from Nepal, uh, Dr. Kaleem and uh, uh, engineer Sayyid Abbas Salih from UIT Lahore and Center of Excellence, engineer Murad Sahin from uh, Turkey, and engineer Onra uh, Mesigal from Turkey again. I'm also thankful to our uh, other uh, uh, Chief guest engineer Shahid Hamid, who have uh, spared his time to participate in this. 
at the end i would like to thank uh, uh, my team uh, organizing team uh, who have worked day and night in last 15 days i think and they have made this uh, event successful so i am uh, specially thankful uh, we have worked under the leadership of dean uh, professor dr habibur rahman and dr khalid so after thanking them i am uh, thankful to dr kaleem dr shahid engineer usman ali engineer abdur rahman and all the staff who have helped in this special thanks to ics uh, students uh, uh, since morning they are busy with us and they have made this seminar possible uh, we will be uh, putting this uh, recording on youtube or facebook for future use of our students and other engineers and uh, cpd uh, certificates some of them are uh, printed and some of them we will be posting to you people so uh, after after this uh, thing i think we should conclude this session uh, and thankful to, to all the participants who have made this event a success and uh, we will be having a small ceremony of prize distribution and after that all of you are invited to the lunch in the faculty room thank you very much thank you sir now i would request professor dr habibur rahman professor dr khalid farooq and professor dr noor mohammad khan to come forward for the distribution of shields and certificates So first of all I would request Dr Kaleem server to please come forward and receive his shield Engineer Yasser in the engineer Sayyed Abbas please come forward and receive your shield Uh, Dr. Mazhar for his uh, certificate. Okay, next, engineer Engineer Usman Ali. Dr. Muhammad Shahid, Azaz Ahmed, Engineer Abdul Rahman, Azaz Ahmed, Azaz Ahmed. is ask them next we have students of ice first is mr shahir sipra please come forward and receive your certificate ikra batul ikra please come forward and aksa riaz mahnoor zulfikar uh ek next is rani bibi samir ikbal रानी भी भी आ गई ओके मिस्टर अली जफर अली अली जफर और अली हसन जफर 
Mr. Roshan. Mr. Roshan. Mr. Kazi Muhammad Abdullah. Okay. Then Miss Mushata Nazir. Mr. Hastan Sajjad. All right, so with this, our ceremony is concluded. Thank you very much. And all of you are invited to join for the lunch in the faculty room. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you,